we are going to talk about another supervised learning approach um, called lazy learning. So just to kind of uh, situate this, this video, we talked about what is supervised learning uh, and started talking about decision models. Uh, decision trees was uh, one, something that we talked about uh, in the previous video. And then we're talking about lazy learners now. So what is lazy learning? Um, one school of thought in supervised learning approaches is that you really don't need to learn anything uh, when you get the uh, training data, right? So you don't build the model, just remember the instances that you see. And then uh, when you are actually trying to infer the label, that means when you're uh, labeling a new instance, find other instances from your training data that are similar to this given test instance. So the training phase itself is not doing anything except memorizing all the instances. And then when you get a new instance, when you really need to use that classifier um, in labeling a new instance, you're going to find what are other instances similar to this instance and what was their label, right? So you find k different instances from your training data set. And then you choose the majority of that of uh, uh, the majority label from this set of k that you have chosen uh, that are the most similar to a given instance. And the majority label becomes your final label. So by doing this split, uh, this kind of creates a probabilistic view of really this notion that uh, that we t saw as one of the examples. I mean, see what your friends are doing, see what your neighbors are doing, and do what your neighbors do, right? Um, so in this approach, you're kind of saying, I'll pick a K different instances, and because you need a majority, K is typically odd. So if you if you choose, let's say, five different neighbors, uh, it becomes a five nearest neighbor classifier, right? Um, the important here thing here, though, is that uh, you need to define how you uh, calculate similarity. How do you know that two instances are really similar to each other? Let's take an example of uh, points in a plane, right? So when you are when you have points uh, given in two axes, let's call them x1, x2. Um, uh, this is a Euclidean space. And so the actual distances, uh, the Euclidean distance between points uh, will tell you how similar they are, right? The closest points is uh, is a good definition here. So you know that uh, for a given point, uh, let's say the, a new instance kind of comes in. Um, this instance is a blue square. But uh, before uh, in your training data, you have three different classes, class A, class B, class C. So it's a multi-class classification problem. Um, there are there are some points uh, in the space that are in green points, some points are red points, some points are black points. And then when this new instance of blue square comes in, you um, you see, and, and we decided that k should be 5. That means you're going to find 5 closest neighbors. So you, you create some sort of a circle, which is uh, in the Euclidean space, is going to create uh, be the, the group of points that are kind of uh, close to you or equally equal distant from you. Um, so in this case, the 5 points that are inside the circle are the, uh, the closest 5 points, right? Uh, you do the 5 points here. And then you uh, you see, uh, given this blue square, what is the probability of finding a, a green? Uh, what, what is the probability that the label is green? So you decide that probability based on how many of these five instances are green. Similarly, you're going to find what is the probability of the label being red by seeing how many of the five instances are red of five neighbors are red and uh, the probability of the label being black given uh, this new instance uh, which is a blue square you can see how uh, what is the uh, how many of your five nearest neighbors are blue are black right so in this case uh, there are four green neighbors and one red neighbor and there is a zero there are zero black neighbors so the probability of green uh, the class being green is 4 over 5. The probability of the class being red is 1 over 5. And probability of 
the class being black is 0 over 5. So uh, the majority class here is green and hence the label that you'll assign to this new instance is green. That's it. So what you have done is just somehow memorized where all the points were and when a new instance came in just found uh, five nearest neighbors looked at their labels and chose the majority uh, label and that was your label assigned to this point and in fact you would be right in this case right i mean it is in the area of where all the green points are and so the likely label for this uh, new instance is going to be green so so uh, so that's why this this classification model is is, is a pretty good model too um but it depends on where those points are so in this case it's uh, the, in the previous case we so happened that we had the point really in the midst of green points what if the point was here if when the new instance is here and you apply the same circle as you had earlier you see that no points come within that circle. So if you had created the threshold that my, my neighbors are uh, basically, let's say 10 feet away from me, right? Uh, then uh, if you find that there are no points, you have to expand your definition of uh, what a neighbor should be. So your circle has to be larger and when you expand your circle, you can find five neighbors, but you have to go farther to find them, right? Uh, and in this case, then uh, there are three red neighbors and two black neighbors, and so your label would be red. So you can still assign a label, but now your, your affinity to your neighbors is kind of lower because you have to go farther. So your similarity to your neighbors is low. And this is what is typically uh, the biggest issue of a nearest neighbor classifier when you have very well defined uh, similarity function and you have a threshold and you can bound how much you have to go how far you need to go to find neighbors the labels are pretty good uh, but but because the points can be very sparse you may have to go really far and and you're trying to uh, find a label of a neighbor who is very far away from you as something that's an effect uh, that has an effect on you uh, and so that the the affinity to to your neighbors would become low uh, so the key takeaways from this nearest neighbor classifier is it is a lazy learner that means it really doesn't do much during the learning phase uh, it just kind of memorizes the in, the training data right um, but then it can deal with arbitrary distributions uh, because it has an ability to expand its similarity functions, definition of your neighbors, depending on how dense your uh, your neighbors are, right? If they're, they're very close to you, your circle of five neighbors is going to be extremely small. But if they are far away from you, your circle of five neighbors is going to be large, but you're still going to find five neighbors eventually if your data set has more than five points, right? So, uh, the, um, but so it can deal with arbitrary distributions. It's a very simple model and yet pretty accurate model, especially if uh, this, uh, if your assumption that a label uh, is similar to the label of its neighbors is kind of true, then uh, it's, a, it's a very accurate model as well. Uh, the challenge though is that similarity function need to be uh, uh, kind of either application specific and need to be very clearly defined. In Euclidean space, Euclidean distances are good. Uh, there are other measures like cosine similarity or dot products or uh, Manhattan distances and things like that, that you are, and uh, similarity functions like that that could be used. Uh, but you may have to come up with your own uh, measure. If your uh, features are something like age and, uh, and their lab values and their prior conditions and so on, so your similarity function has to kind of include all of those features uh, to decide whether uh, how close you are to your neighbor, right? Uh, but uh, so so um, the, the definition of similarity uh, function is a, is a problem, and it can also be slow at classification time because you need to find the five closest instances whenever a new instance comes in. So when a new instance comes in, you don't know where it's going to land in your space. And so you cannot really pre-compute anything uh, to make the, the inference uh, step faster. To, to, uh, so whenever you, you come to classification time, you really have to uh, come up with unique ways to find your closest neighbors, which can be uh, exponential, which can be kind of a uh, n square kind of similarity. So it can be quadratic uh, time.
Um, and the other bigger problem is that it doesn't produce interpretable models. So even if you can, it, it follows your hypothesis that uh, your label should be similar to your neighbors, it doesn't create a model that can, that is very interpretable. You cannot really see what features helped you make a decision. Remember, all those features have to be somehow encoded into the similarity function. Right? So unless the similarity function is not carefully designed, then it cannot create, doesn't create interpretable models. If the similarity function is uh, carefully designed, then you can use the factors that went into that to, to uh, interpret your model.